I'm gonna do a video. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm reloading for the 1871 Mauser. Now, please, I'm gonna warn you. This bullet I'm using and what I'm doing is specifically for the 1871 Mauser rifle, which is the 11 millimeter by 58, I believe, or 11.1 by 58. I'm not quite sure what the metric dimension is, but you know, the one terminology is 43 Mauser. But this bullet I'm using uh, is different. It was designed for the Gra. And the problem with the 71 miles are a lot of people, when you try to get a bullet to the groove diameter, which is much larger than the groove diameter of 446, which is for the 1871-84, it's more of a 450-something, I believe. And see, people have problems. You cannot get a bullet in the case that will made up with the groove diameter and get it to chamber. So this, this is a problem with the gun. Actually what should be done to alleviate all the problems is load this case with a paper patch lead bullet and that would solve the problem. But, much like the 1874 Gras, there was a man who developed the bullet. And what it is is from Cast Bullet Engineering out of Australia, keeps it as a standard uh, stock item. It's the 11 millimeter gra double cavity. Brass mold, good mold. I got a video on this on YouTube somewhere, so look for the mold and you'll find a video of me casting a bullet. It's about two years old. And also, I'm going to do this kind of condensed without getting in depth in this. So, I posted a video about reloading uh, for the 11 millimeter growl with a healed bullet. If you watch that video, even though you're not loading for the growl, French growl rifle, uh, a lot of what I'm doing with that, I'm going to do with this here, okay, and instead of going into a 20, 30 minute video. So what I have is just basic, basic Bertram brass, 43 miles there, and what I've done is sized it, cleaned it, uh, full length resizing with RCBR with lead dies. I use the lead die set. And I'm priming. Now, the reason, and then we go on. The reason I'm warning you is because here is a Lyman bullet. Uh, it's 350 grains depending on the alloy, 350 to 360. And this bullet is at 446, which in a 7184 is correct and proper. Now this is the bullet for the drop, and first thing it weighs 400 grains, so it's 50 grains heavier. And it's healed in a way, in other words, forward where you would seat it. Like I said, you'd have to look at uh, I give a better explanation reloading for the gra and reloading for the uh, and, and the uh, video on the bolt mold. But there's bands in the front here at the widest point. I hate that. All right. And the diameter we get on that, I believe is like 454, 455. So you're talking almost 10 thousandths bigger diameter. You do not want to load these cartridges in a magazine fed Mauser 71 slash 84. This is just for the single shot rifle. <clears throat> so, if you look at a sides case, this bullet does not fit in the neck. So what we're going to do is just expand the neck a little. And the bottom healed end of that bullet measures 440. Okay, so all you got to do is kind of just barely touch the end with an expansion plug. 
and just flare it lightly and then seat it. And probably we're going to have to use a specialized die and I explained that in the grab video how I made it which is basically a 4570 seating crimp die from out of a lead die set and I bored it out so the bottleneck cartridges will fit up in there. If the graph fits up in there, the Mauser will. Okay. And I give specific information on how I made that tool in the other video. I'm not going to repeat it. Uh, I know some people don't have a Grau, only have the German rifle. But I'm going to try to make a quick video and test out this bullet in the 71. Uh, my results in the Grau were good. It's accurate. And what I was doing is using, as a lubricant, a Lee Liquid Alex, just straight Alex. And you just spin it around in a bucket. And I've kind of coated it, I don't know if you can see it, fairly heavy with it. And I'm using accurate powder. Now, I'll go over that when we get into charging, what powder I'm using. And I got good results, but I had problems with letting it. Now, last time I fired the 71 Mauser was years ago with the Gun Geek, had some sort of uh, challenge of a single shot black powder gun. And I went and did it and fired 10 or 20 rounds out of it, put the gun up. And that's been quite a few years ago. Uh, so I haven't shot the gun in a while. I got to get it down. I'm going to make some of this ammo. Going to get it down, give it a clean run. And now I have a bore scope which I didn't back then. I'm going to run the bore scope down and look for leading or anything. And if there is leading buildup from prior, I'll take note of it and try to remove it before I fire this. And we're going to try to see if we can get uh, a round that's accurate. Now, a lot of people have tried over the years and had problems and they'll, they'll go and cut out the uh, chamber, the neck area, so you can get a larger bullet up in there and it's not really a good idea screwing with the gun. It's best to try to replicate something even though it might be a little bit more difficult which works properly in the gun without modifying it. Uh, but, you know, what can I say? So, what we've gone so far, primed it, sized it. So next step we're going to go and we're going to get our uh, expansion plug and expand that neck out. Okay, what I've done is taken the GRA expansion plug and you set it in there and you just keep running it slowly down and then test fitting the bullet. You just want to barely break the edge on that. Now, I may be able to get away with using this uh, expanding plug. We'll see. And if this is the case, then set from the last time that I reloaded, should expand it out enough. Yep. Just want to barely get it to expand and then be able to take that bullet. Get it into the neck, it's a little tight, and push it down to where that heel starts, or that expanded uh, lip is on the bullet. And that's all you got to do. Now, once you expand all of them, you charge them with powder charge and just with your hand press the bullet down. Then the next step would be I made a special crimp die crimp these and then you crimp it and that should be it and there you got your uh, 455 diameter bullet heeled bullet loaded on your uh, 43 Mauser for the 71 single shot rifle so that's the expansion end of it and I'm going to run the cases through and I'm going to charge them and then uh, We'll go on to the crimp, uh, and then it'll be done. Now we're going to charge the cases with powder. 
I'm using a load of Accurate 5744. Now, I found this load to be good in the grot, was accurate, uh, got up there to a good velocity, but there was a problem with letting. So, I'm going to try this. I'm going to use a load that was consistent in the ground with this bullet, see what it does, and I'm going to try something a little bit different with lubricating the bullet. But for right now, we're just at the stage where we're charging with our powder, and we're going to get that done. Then once we're done, take a flashlight, you look at your reloading block, make sure all your powder levels are even and the same, no double charges, this is safety, and then we'll go on to seating the bullet. Okay, after we charge our powder, go down and we look in all the cases with a flashlight to make sure there's no double charge in our smokeless powder. It fills up about one-third of the case. Now, in the past, generally I put a thing of Dacron down on the powder to hold it against the primer. I found that it, it doesn't matter. Uh, I tried doing it, skipping that step. Okay, so now <clears throat> you got everything charged. And to seat your bullet is basically you take your bullet, take your case, you might have to wiggle it in there a little, it's a tight fit, and then just push it down. And that's all it has to be done. Grab a handful, and <clears throat> they have to be crimped because they're loose, they're just finger tight. You know, they're not, there's nothing holding the uh, bullet in there. So, what I did is I went and modified 4570 die and the reason I did that is because it had a taper crimp and it'll go around that wide part and actually crimp uh, the case to hold the bullet steady and uh, where I modified that I'll tie in at the beginning of this the video about the gra, and I explain how I modified that die. Uh, just machined it out, opened it up a little to get the cases up in there. So that'll be our next step once I get all the bullets seated. Alright, the last step we have here is the crimp. What I've taken is a Lee 4570 seating and crimp die. And I bored it out so this bottleneck case will fit up in there. And I use it on the Gra. It's the first time I've used it on the Mauser. And you kind of go up until you feel it push the brass down a little. And all you want it to do is, is crimp that brass down so the bullet doesn't move. If it turns, that's fine. Uh, this is all in the experimental stage. I'm kind of sorry that the uh, information isn't more exact. I'm kind of doing this in tandem with another uh, project. But now we have a finished uh, product here, the crimp. And the only other thing is, like I said, I had a problem with leading. So what I'm going to do with these is something also I'm experimenting with is I'm going to add a little bit more lubricant. And I'll show you that and then we'll take these out and give them a try and see what they do. Okay, final step. Like I said, this is kind of an experiment. What I have is in this pot, I had the old Alex Beeswax uh, lubricant, the old stick lubricant. I think these come with Lyman uh, lubricizers. And that's where you put the, hollow, the tube with the hole, you crank the lubricizer, pressurize it. And this stuff is soft. You didn't need a heating plate under it back in the old days. You used to just use this brown stuff straight up. It's kind of sticky, nasty. It's old-fashioned lube. It was used for years with cast bullets. 
Uh, I have a bunch of it. So what I decided is because I had the leading problem with this bullet and the other gun, and I had this lube laying around with no use for it, so I melted it down. Then what I'm doing is on a hot plate with this molten, I'm dipping the bullet in up to the case. Now I already have a good coating of the Lee Liquid Alux on there, but that didn't seem to work. So now I'm putting this heavy duty coating of Alux and wax on the nose of the bullet. Now like I said, this is just an experiment. I don't know if it will do any good. I don't know if I'm just making a big mess, if it will affect the accuracy, the function, uh, maybe it'll have no effect on the lighting whatsoever. I don't know. It's just something I'm experimenting with and giving a try. It's an idea. Uh, here. And like I said, this is all kind of done on the fly. I'm using my experience with the Gra to work on this uh, Mauser 71 stuff. And like I said earlier in the video, I did not, uh, I have not shot the gun in quite a few years. I have to check it and see if the last smokeless loading I fired in there has leaded the barrel. And we're going to give this bullet a try for something to do in that gun. Just out of curiosity, because I got the mold. And the guy that designed it said it can be used for the Gras, the French Gras. Or it can be used for the Mauser 71. A similar problem. Where if you put a bullet that was bigger than the groove diameter in the case, it will not chamber in the rifle. So the solution was this heel bullet. But the problem is lubricating. So we're going to give this a try here in the next few days. And uh, <clears throat> also, if this fails, this still gives me results I'm not satisfied with. I may try putting like a high-tech bullet coat on this bullet and then trying that out to see if I can control the leading. But for right now, it's our experimental thing. We're going to give it a shot in the 71 miles or here in a day or so.